Right. Wonderful. Uh, first of all, thank you to uh, Louisa and Hendrik for uh, spearheading this uh, effort. If there was a uh, civil lining in the current crisis, uh, it would be that although we are socially isolated uh, at home, uh, we have somehow become more uh, globally connected uh, with one another. Uh, so uh, we were supposed to uh, kind of give a visual tour of uh, the city in which we, we are uh, based. So that's uh, what I will be doing. Uh, and as uh, Hendrik mentioned, uh, Seattle was the first city uh, in the United States uh, with a reported case of COVID-19 back in uh, January. Uh, but it wasn't until uh, early March when uh, the city began to shut down and it happened very quickly. Uh, first, it started with my own uh, university. The University of Washington was uh, the first in the country to cancel all uh, in-person classes. Uh, followed by public libraries, schools, uh, cafe, uh, restaurants, uh, playgrounds, sports, and so on. Uh, it was just, uh, like a rock call on the, our feet. Uh, things that we take for granted uh, all of a sudden uh, have their doors shut. And uh, in the state of Washington, the uh, essential businesses are still open, uh, but the uh, like many places else, you know, social and physical distancing has be transformed how urban spaces are used uh, from standing in line uh, to getting into a uh, grocery market, uh, if you're allowing to, to go in at all, and to the way parts and open space are uh, used. And in uh, Seattle, as many businesses are closed and with storefront uh, boarded up, uh, these uh, store farms have uh, become a canvas uh, for local artists. And uh, so many of these efforts are actually uh, coordinated uh, with neighborhood organizations reaching out to artists and with a donation of supplies and materials from uh, you know, paint companies, for, for example. This is, uh, in my view, one of the few kind of bright spots uh, in terms of uh, community resilience and uh, the transformation of public realm. Our streets have never been so colorful and interesting uh, as in recent days. And uh, speaking of community resilience, one uh, particularly remarkable effort uh, in Seattle is that neighborhoods and individuals uh, have organized to help uh, those in need. In Seattle's Chinatown International District, uh, for example, uh, the crisis uh, hit very much uh, uh, hit uh, much earlier as the exp uh, businesses experienced a steep decline uh, due to racist fear um, uh, against the community. Uh, and uh, so very soon after the outbreak, uh, a relief fund was set up uh, to help uh, the local businesses uh, organized by uh, many of the community-based organizations uh, that have been working in the community for, uh, for decades. Uh, volunteers started to fundraise and organize food delivery with our predominantly uh, senior residents after uh, the state issued the stay at home uh, order. And uh, so this is one example of kind of community resilience that has uh, made a difference in uh, especially uh, communities that are impacted uh, more in this uh, in the current uh, pandemic. And uh, there are many other uh, voluntary efforts, including one uh, that was organized by uh, my students. And so without access to uh, school facilities, uh, they formed this sort of distributed uh, production line uh, to uh, fabricate uh, personal protection equipment uh, for healthcare uh, workers. And so these are uh, pictures of uh, students uh, working at home, uh, making face shields, and uh, you know, trying to uh, make use of the limitation uh, under the current situation, but uh, still being able to uh, help others in need. And uh, with help of George Lee, a local artist, and also a former student of mine, uh, we have 552 units uh, fabricated and shipped uh, to Brooklyn, uh, New Orleans, uh, Atlanta, and also locally here, uh, in Seattle. Uh, so efforts like this, I argue, uh, creates a form of public space uh, when the actual physical space is no longer uh, available or uh, accessible. And, and that to me uh, was 
perhaps the most powerful things I have witnessed uh, during the current pandemic. Uh, one that I think challenged the common assumptions of uh, how public realm and public space uh, functions. And, uh, and there are many uh, interesting kind of uh, ramification uh, that we can begin to tease out of uh, this particular kind of scenario. And uh, I'll be happy to speak more about this uh, during the discussion. Um, so thank you.